Hi, I'm Dexter Gelfand, and I'm going to speak now about one facet or principle related to my practice that I call therapeutic spiritual counseling. Now, this is a very, very basic principle that I've noticed uh, very recently in observing behaviors and what people are interested in, what people are worried about, and it seems to boil down to this. It's, it's as if it was one overriding root command to everyone, which is that you must justify your existence. You have to justify your existence. And uh, this is exhibited in so many ways. I mean, uh, the most uh, basic uh, criticism people have of each other is that they're not doing something worthwhile, they're not uh, earning their way in some way that they're not justifying their existence. To say that somebody's worthless, the subject of self-worth is all tied up in the idea that you have to justify your existence. Now think about that a minute. There's no choice but to exist, is there? So why must it be justified? <laughs> now, uh, maybe some people use that for motivation, to accomplish something great or to meet their responsibilities. But how about if you just were thinking in terms of just accomplishing something great and meeting your responsibilities, rather than all the loss of self-esteem or the low self-esteem associated with the idea of I'm not justifying my existence. It's very interesting how I'm seeing this play out as a very, very basic uh, compulsion with an anxiety attached to it. You know, a worry of, you know, I'm not doing enough to justify my existence. And I think we'd all be better off if we just operated with the idea of accomplishing good or great things, doing what needs to be done, uh, creating something worthwhile, contributing to someone or something or to the world, but not from the negative motivation of, otherwise I won't be justifying my existence. And uh, I, I speak a lot about uh, identities, you know, these personas that we take on. And I've been aware for quite some time now that whatever persona, whatever false me, uh, whatever attitude someone will take on and uh, sort of become that thing in situations or at times, that any identity at all that a person takes on, will do anything they need to. They will create or attract or fabricate whatever conditions will justify the existence of that identity. And that's why when someone takes on or assumes some persona, which you might find inappropriate, that whatever you say or do to try and change the attitude of that identity, uh, try to help them out of being hostile or depressed or uh, feeling anxiety. If it's based in a persona that must feel that way, to be that way, then anything you try to do to talk that persona out of that identity will fail. Anything you try to do that doesn't help the person to directly gain consciousness and awareness of how this identity is wearing them will fail because that identity will create, attract, or fabricate whatever circumstances will justify the existence of that identity. So again, it's justify your existence being played out in the identities we take on and create. Uh, you think of the, the, uh, the phrase, God created man in his own image. Well, isn't that what we're doing with the identities? When we transfer the concept of you must justify your existence into the personas that we create and take on. They will cre create, they will attract, or they will fabricate whatever conditions will justify the existence of that identity. Uh, some people will tell you that they don't trust anyone or, or some such thing. And no matter how you argue with them about whatever the attitude of that identity is, they're going to find some way of justifying the existence of the identity that they're being. It's a very, very basic compulsion. And I think that it's not a good one. 
I think that it makes us uh, uh, makes it can make us make it incapable to change, or very much more difficult to change and grow. Okay, you can take all the joy out of whatever endeavor you're involved in, whatever project you're working on to accomplish something. The fear of not succeeding and justifying your existence. So I think that if you consciously, mindfully, give some thought to this idea that you've been trying to justify your existence, maybe by treating others or certain people as being less than you, or promoting yourself as being something or a certain way, or taking a condescending attitude towards others, or taking a subservient attitude towards others, whatever it might be that's rooted in the idea of how I must justify my existence. You don't have to justify your existence. Everybody exists, including you. <laughs> so there's a better approach to life, and that is to just be motivated by the sense of accomplishment and joy and satisfaction of what you can do, what you can create, and what you can accomplish. And yes, this does relate to my most recent talk before this one, that happiness and serenity and joy are not found by seeking those feelings or sensations. They're not, they're not stably accomplished. These things are accomplished by accomplishing our goals, our purposes, something worthwhile that we can do or create. And so there's a joy in that. There's a serenity in that. And if you think about it, whatever it is you feel you want to do or you need to do or you must do or you'd like to do or you dream of doing or whatever might be a goal for you, um, try approaching it from the positive angle of how great this will be. You know, and every step of progress, every, every thought that relates to that should be imbued with, with an enthusiasm and a joy. And not a fear that you might fail to justify your existence, the idea that a person is a fail, I'm a failure or some such thing. Uh, no, because we all exist. We all deserve to exist. We are all here. So the whole attitude of enforcing on yourself or imposing on others or having it imposed on you that there are certain things you must do to justify your existence um, is, is a negative, not a positive. And if you want to motivate somebody else to do well, your children or somebody who works for you or a friend or whatever, they would be better served and you would be better served by taking the positive attitude of what will be accomplished, how good it is. Not the idea that if you don't, you're not justifying your existence and therefore you'll be punished in one, some way or you should punish yourself. So I think we all need to take a a good look at the imbued uh, negative motivation of I must justify my existence. You must justify your existence. Because we all exist, so why should we have to justify it? We can all do better. We can all relax and be happy. And whatever it is we're working towards, we can take joy in that, rather than this fear of failing to justify your existence. Because you're going to be here anyway. <laughs> so you might as well look at things from a positive, enthusiastic viewpoint of whatever moves in the direction of the things you want to accomplish is something to take satisfaction in and motivation in and continue. But envisioning the greatness or goodness of what it is your purpose is, what it is you're working towards, rather than this uh, negative uh, uh, you know, the penalties of failing or some such thing that won't justify your existence. There's no fun in that. That's not a good game. So, again, let's recognize that there is this idea of justify your existence. And then think about that idea and think about how the demand or need to justify your existence seems to you now. How does the idea of you must justify your existence seem to you now? Not a great motivation. So instead, let's replace that with all the enthusiasm and joy and satisfaction of setting or having goals to accomplish great things. And take pleasure in the work. That's my message for this talk.
You don't need to justify your existence. Go out and do something great. Thank you.